right, we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to your own personal boot camp, how to effectively learn your next technology. And here is Joe Erickson. All right, I got the applause, I'm done, right? <laughs> uh, so this is a talk that's basically around sort of learning theory and things that I have learned while basically getting, writing curriculum for a boot camp. So first of all, who am I? Uh, I am Joe Erickson. Uh, I am a curriculum de developer at Tech Elevator, uh, which is a 14-week tech boot camp. Um, basically, a lot of locations around the Rust Belt. Uh, we have locations in Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, uh, Detroit, Pittsburgh. Um, more opening soon that I'm not allowed to talk about or someone will yell at me. Um, and basically, we teach people a variety of skills uh, in the tech space to basically get them ready for a web developer job. Um, so we teach them Java, C Sharp, uh, MVC architecture, CSS. Uh, we get into the Vue framework. Um, but it's basically a full-time intensive training to get them from knowing absolutely nothing uh, to basically a junior dev role. Um, and so that is, you know, while doing that, I've learned a lot of sort of learning techniques uh, in designing the curriculum. Um, I used to actually teach there. Uh, any of my students in the audience? Yeah, no, they never, they never want to hear me again, so. Um, <laughs> No one's there. Uh, uh, you know, how learning happens, what are the best practices, uh, things like that. Uh, and so really that's what this talk is about. Um, how can maybe some of that information be used to help you learn sort of your next technology that you're going to dive into. Uh, and this is sort of broken up into three parts. One is preparation. One is sort of assessment of where you are. Uh, and the next one is basically the roadmap for actually learning something. Um, so learning is basically the constant of this job. Uh, you know, as programmers, uh, which I assume most of you probably are, um, we are learning stuff all the time. Uh, whether it's a new thing in Python, or whether it's a JavaScript framework, or whether it's Hadoop, or whether it's, you know, something else. Uh, learning is the thing that we're constantly doing and that we have to work on. Um, so learning effectively and not sort of spinning your wheels or, you know, giving up in the middle uh, is, is pretty important. So, you know, I... But any of this can be taken away and prevent you from floundering on the next thing, uh, that would be really helpful. Um, so the first part is that learning is mostly mental. Most of you are saying, duh, it's <laughs> learning. Uh, but it's mental and it's emotional. Um, one of the things that we really run into when uh, we get into students coming into Tech Elevator, um, they are Typically, people that have been doing some sort of other job have no experience with technology at all, and then we're throwing them in here and saying, yeah, in three months, you're going to have a job doing this. Uh, and that, is a, that can be a very uh, emotional thing for them. Uh, it's something that they have to get over this idea that they aren't good enough. Uh, and really, the biggest piece that they have to handle is winning this mental game of, sort of wanting to give up at all times and just feeling overwhelmed by everything. Um, it is a fast-paced program. Uh, they are learning something new every day. Uh, the first day, we're teaching them variables. Uh, and by the end of it, they're building web applications. Uh, and that can go pretty fast. And so one of the biggest keys here is just knowing that you can do what we're telling you you can do. Um, a lot of times when they learn something, we always say that they don't really learn it until two days after the class that we taught that uh, subject on. Um, there's a lot that just has to sink in over time. And when you're sort of confronted every single day with things that you don't know, uh, that there's certain people that can give up on that. Uh, there's, there's a lot of tears that happen at Tech Elevator sometimes. Um, it's, a, it's a hard thing to get through. Uh, and so really, the big key is to know that you can do this. Um, and so this was an article I read recently uh, that talked about of all the things that can boost emotions, motivation, and perceptions during a work day, the single most important is making progress in meaningful work. Um, I agree with that, but I actually don't quite agree with that. It's not making progress, it's seeing the progress. Um, you can make all the progress you want, and if students don't realize they're making the progress, uh, they still want to give up and they still don't want to do the, you know, the, the work anymore. Um, so one of the things that we really try and work on is try and get them to sort of 
relook at things that they have done in the past uh, to realize that, hey, you just wrote that for loop and you didn't think about it. Uh, you know, that's a that's a usually a very big win for students as they go through. Um, and so I'll talk about it, this as we go through, but really, like the first rule of learning anything is you've got to be aware of your progress. Um, there are times when you might try and learn a technology that's different, very different than what uh, the one you're typically using. Uh, I have gotten into sort of business development stuff, and I am really bad at it. I was 20 years good at the thing I was doing for a living, and then I have to learn all this new stuff. And um, being able to see that I am making progress in it is, is the key that keeps you going with what you're learning. Um, so also there's, a, you know, that, that's sort of rule number one. You got to keep that in mind. You have to be able to win this mental game of the learning or none of the rest of this matters. Um, so how do we learn? Uh, there are a lot of learning theories out there, um, especially for sort of uh, the, the sort of work that we're do. We, we're basically a trade school. We're teaching you a skill to use. Um, we're not really, we do teach some computer science stuff, but it's not, we don't get too far into that. That's not what you're competing on. You're competing on you can actually do the work, um, which some computer science graduates can't do. Uh, uh, so, you know, we, we are really looking at how, how does adult learning take place. Uh, and one of the things that I really glommed onto at the beginning was this idea of the Dreyfus model of skill acquisition. Uh, which is the thing that you can Wikipedia and uh, get a pretty good explanation on. Um, but the idea of the Dreyfus model is that there are these different stages uh, of your skills within um, you know, whatever it is you're trying to learn. Uh, and so the stages are, if we think of this as like, you know, you want to learn chess. Like the novice is someone who does not know anything about chess. There's these funny little pieces and people are moving them. It looks like a game. I like games. I want to learn this, right? <laughs> Um, so you know nothing about it at all. And we have a number of students that come in that we, the first day is how to find the terminal program in your computer. Um, some of them have not used computers all that much uh, to be able to do that. But um, so, you know, we're really starting them out as, as novices that have not seen this before. Uh, the next stage from that is beginner. Um, beginner is where you know very situation specific things. You know, we told you to type this command and then you, uh, you end up you know, something happens on the computer, and you know that that command makes that thing happen on the computer. And there's no real lateral thinking, there's no applying that lesson to something else. Uh, the beginner is where you're starting to build, if the novice is you're learning the rules, the beginner is where you're starting to build this mental model in your head about how things are working. And you can start trying to apply things, you know, once you get out of this stage. And into competent, you're able to sort of apply those lessons to different things. Uh, the next two stages are proficient. Once you're proficient, you can do the job, uh, you know, and then you have expert. Um, and so knowing sort of where you are in this process is pretty important for knowing how to learn these things. Uh, the novice really does learn differently than the competent uh, developer. Um, and so knowing this is, and being able to grade yourself within this scale, uh, which I'll talk about, uh, is, is pretty important. Um, and, and like I said, what we're doing with Tech Elevator is we're basically trying to get you from novice to competent, right? You're beginning junior developer stage. Um, you're starting to think about how to apply these lessons to different things, uh, but that's, that's really what we're trying to get you to. So knowing where you are in the process, that's really important to even move forward with whatever you're learning. Uh, and I'll talk about these stages again and sort of how to figure out where you are in these stages. Because if, if you know Python and you want to learn Java, you're probably not at novice stage necessarily, right? If statements are if statements, while loops are while loops. Um, but there's some things that you still need to pick up in there. So now I'm going to slow it down. Black slide, right? Uh, and talk about what these stages of learning are and really dive into each one. Uh, so with the novice, uh, the novice is the stage at which you are unconsciously incompetent. Um, these, are, these are actual terms. There's the four stages of competency. And novice is you are unconsciously incompetent, right? Chess sounds like a fun game. I could be good at chess. Let me play chess. And you know nothing about chess at all. Uh, this, is, this is dreamland, you know? Oh, I'm going to be a programmer. 
14 weeks and I'll be a programmer, you know, and you haven't hit the brick walls yet, multiple brick walls. Um, so you don't really know what you don't know at this stage. Uh, everything is brand new. Um, you know, you, you, you know that there's a, such a thing as computers and someone's got to write the stuff on there and I want to do that. Uh, that's the Nova stage. Uh, when you're at this stage, the most important thing is to learn the basics. You are learning just the basic stuff of what goes into this and you're not trying to reach any further than that. And really important, what you're trying to learn is the concepts. Uh, you need to be able to build some sort of mental model of how these things work. Um, for example, for our students, we're teaching them what an array is. And this is the day after they learn what a variable is, right? And, and they have to, you know, as if you're a programmer, you, like, when I say array, it probably pops in your head, oh yeah, you got these boxes and they're in a row, right? You, you understand this stuff, but they don't have that mental model. And the first piece is to really try and wrap your head around and to build something in your head that visualizes these ideas and gives you sort of those, um, sort of that experience and structure that then you can hang other lessons on. It might not be the correct mental model. Uh, you wouldn't believe what people think arrays are once you introduce arrays, but uh, at least they have a mental model that they can start working with. Um, what you're really trying to learn here is the what and the how. Right? What is an array and how do I use it? And that's it. It's not, you know, you're not, why is it like that? No, don't worry about that. You're learning the what and the how. Uh, and the best way to learn the what and the how is to go through tutorials and sort of step-by-step -step instructions. Um, tutorials are a great way to sort of introduce yourself into the concepts of what you're learning uh, as far as um, any kind of new technology. Uh, so if you're looking at Vue and you don't, like you might know MVC, but you don't know how Vue works and all that, you know, the components in the browser, what is all that stuff. Um, either you avoid it for as long as you can, like I do, or you, you know, you go through some tutorials and you try and piece together what are the pieces that, that go into to learning this. Uh, at this point, if you really are a novice, it, it is really helpful to go through a couple different tutorials because they're going to come at things from different angles. Um, whatever you do, don't read the documentation. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, the documentation wants to tell you everything. And they want to tell you things in like the 50 different ways that you can do it. Um, this is one of the problems I have with Code Academy is you go on there and they teach you, oh, you could use arrays this way, or you could use them this way, or you could use them that way. And as a novice that knows nothing about this stuff, it's like, okay, well, which one is the way I do it? You know, they they don't have the ability to discern what's a good way and what's a bad way depending on circumstances. So really you just want to learn one way. Uh, and the worst way to do that is to read the documentation. Uh, so find a tutorial uh, and start off with just, you know, you just want to do something in a tutorial, step-by-step uh, -step instructions at first. Um, and so for our students, whenever we introduce a new concept, we give them a tutorial to walk through. Uh, and we give them, we actually give them documentation, but we wrote the documentation. It just talks about one way to do stuff. Uh, and we sort of walk through that, right? When you want to learn how to cook, it's best just to learn how to fry a steak in a cast iron pan. You don't need a triste on like the 19th century cooking techniques for beef. Uh, that will just get you lost uh, and you don't want that. And more importantly, what you want to do is code. You don't want to read a bunch. Reading a bunch is not going to help you get a mental model of how things work. Seeing things work is what gets you that mental model. Uh, another key, learn from those that are just a little bit ahead of you, right? If you're a novice, learn from beginners or from competent. Don't learn from experts because they have no, they have taken so many assumptions into their heads uh, about how things work that they don't even understand that what you don't understand anymore. Uh, we'll get into that where they are, they are unconsciously competent. They really have no idea how they do things anymore. They just know that's the wrong way to do it. Um, and that's, that's hard to do. So one of the things that we have real trouble with at Tech Elevator is finding instructors. Uh, there are programmers that have 20 years of experience um, that come in and uh, they don't know what they're doing when teaching and they, you know, they have to sort of learn this stuff, uh, but it's, it's surprising how hard it is to explain an array when you're a really expert developer and you're talking with someone who has no idea what's going on. Um, so you really need someone that can get to your level 
Uh, and I would say that's probably like two levels above you uh, at some point. Uh, focus just on the technology. Don't find a tutorial. You want to learn Vue. Don't find a tutorial that says, ah, oh, I will show you a tutorial that shows Vuex and SAS and, and oh, and you need to learn, uh, you know, Webpack. And let me show you Webpack and explain all. No, you don't need all that stuff, right? You just want to learn Vue. Uh, a great way to do this is to find like CLI programs that will set up projects for you um, because this is not necessarily a stage where you want to be setting up your own projects. Uh, and finding tutorials that really just focus on sort of the key technology that you're trying to learn. Um, the only thing that those big tutorials would teach you is how to hate life. So you don't want that. Uh, so once you've done tutorials and you've done the step by step and you know, questions will start popping into your head about, I wonder how these things work. I, you know, I, if you start doing tutorials and you're able to basically do things before reading the instructions, then you're probably at a stage where you're ready to move on to uh, sort of the next piece, which is you being a beginner. And beginner is where you're starting to learn the where. This is, you know, where can I use these, this technique? Where can I use, you know, uh, whatever technology that you're learning? Um, and this is where you need to start experimenting. And you need to s start experiment experimenting outside the lines of a tutorial. Uh, the big key here is that you really need to be screwing up. You need to be screwing up a lot. Uh, if you're doing it a lot, then you're, you're doing good. Uh, you need to be pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone uh, of what you know. Um, because that is, you have this mental model in your head, you need to start banging it up against walls and seeing is this, is this really right, right? You're exploring in the dark. Uh, and this is where it really starts to feel bad because you're messing up and you're, yeah, you're laughing. Uh, and, uh, you know, your brain is mapping out all of this exploration that you're doing. Uh, and it, it's helping you uh, actually get better at this. And you really do that by changing your tutorial, right? The tutorials that you're doing, you know, you, you're making a to-do list. Well, try and make it into a, a a book list, right? Like start saving like book titles and authors. Like how would you take the tutorial that you've done and add things to it? Um, it keeps you on the path, but it also lets you explore sort of side avenues of different things. Um, and you know, make your own projects. Uh, it doesn't matter if there's 50 or 100 other applications out there that already do the thing. Uh, this will be the one that you're doing. The point is the, the work, not the finished product, right? Um, in fact, the first thing you do is write a to-do application that starts listing out all the things that you want to learn. Uh, that's a, not a bad way to go. So what you're really looking for is to go beyond that tutorial and start working on making like a simple project. Uh, and, you know, that's, you don't want, so we have a lot of our students that come to us, you know, we just taught them Java. Um, they want to build a command line application. And what they want to do is pull all of the scores from the MLB site, uh, run them through a big calculation, and then it will give them their final, you know, final, their fantasy league or what, final fantasy? No, that's not right. Uh, the fantasy <laughs> league picks for, you know, their baseball team. Uh, and that's a bad example. Don't do that as your first project, right? Pull all the MLB site records and then list them on the screen. Yes, that's good, right? From there, you can maybe save it to a database. Okay, done, right? Then, then you can add on some other uh, crazy thing with your Final Fantasy League. Um, you know, you want to incrementally add bells and whistles. Uh, and the, because, the reason for that is because you want to win at something. Uh, you need that reinforcement that you're actually making progress. Um, if you try and do your big MLB thing and you work for two days and there's a typo in one of the files that you haven't noticed because you're a beginner and you don't notice typos um, and you know, you, you'll feel like you made zero progress at all. And that is a real morale killer at that point. Uh, you really need to work small and, and hopefully have someone that can tell you, no, that's a big project. You need to do this smaller part, right? Um, this is where you're entering into conscious incompetence. You realize how bad you are. Uh, and that's, again, that's a bad feeling. This is the point where most people fail. Um, we have students that will drop out at this point, right? This is the end of week one. 
And they were like, no, I can't do this. And we're like, yes, you can. They're like, no. It's like, okay. <laughs> uh, and we try and, you know, we coach. We try and talk to them about that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, you're kind of reminded of how bad you are at, at things at this point. Uh, and there's sort of three different avenues you could take here. You can give up, right? Uh, this, is, this is a bad avenue. Um, it, you know, you're, you're basically frustrated. You can't figure this out, and you'll never figure this out. Uh, but that's really not how this works. Uh, you just stick with it and you'll do it. Um, when you get frustrated, that's sort of part of the process of learning. Uh, you know, and when you work out, you get sore muscles, right? Do sore muscles feel good? No, they don't. Some people say they do, they're weird. Um, sore muscles don't feel good, but it means that your muscles are building. Right? It means that you did something. Frustration means that your brain is realizing that the mental model it has is not actually correct. Uh, but it needs to readjust that and figure that out. Uh, that's what frustration is, right? Um, you could also go back. There are some people at this stage that will then go back and start doing more tutorials because they're easy and that's comfortable. Uh, and they never make any progress, right? It's people that have been trying to learn programming for two years and they never seem to make any progress and they don't know why. Uh, it's because they keep going back and trying to have someone else tell them how to do these things. Um, and what you really need is to push yourself outside of the comfort zone. The frustration works. Uh, so, you know, you push through it. Uh, if you get super frustrated, take a walk. Um, you know, just you can't advance until you get uncomfortable with this stuff. Uh, and importantly, also track your progress. Um, tracking your progress is how you're going to figure out if you're actually making progress or not. Um, I always say that lumberjacks have it easy. They go out in the morning and they see a bunch of trees and in the evening there's a bunch of logs on the ground. They're like, yeah, I did that. Uh, with programming, we don't have that really, right? We write a bunch of code and then we close our computers and you look around and you're like, what did I really do today? Um, <laughs> oh, that hurt some feelings. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. That's, that's, that's how it feels. Uh, you know, try and make your progress visible. Um, get a to-do list. You know, write things down. Like, when you, when you figure out, you know, like you go through the tutorial of you, write down view on a post-it note, put it up on your wall. You know, I got that one. Okay, what's, what's something else I can look at? Um, it's... Programming is really, because you could also program all day long, have a bug in your code at the end of the day that nothing runs, and you feel like you did nothing that day, right? And then the next morning you wake up and you fix it, and then everything works and you're a golden god, right? I mean, it's, it's the roller coaster of this stuff. Uh, try and even that out a little bit by really tracking your progress and seeing how far you've come. And also sometimes just look back. Yes, I, get, I, I understand this array, and I remember the time when I didn't at all. Um, that is actually a real example that we use in boot camp. <laughs> Where people say they're not getting it in week three and we write an array on this. What is this? It's an array. How do, you, how do I access this? You know, and they're, they, they realize that they are actually picking things up. They're just a little bit later than what they would expect. Um, going through this then, you know, once you do this for a while, you start getting into where you can actually build projects. You are actually, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, wrong things. Okay, you're actually competent. <laughs> I am not. Uh, you know, you're, you're not able to make a full project from scratch, but you're able to sort of follow tutorials. You're able to change things, and you might have a personal project, and you're able to add features to it. It might take a little longer than you think it should, but you can actually do it. Um, and this is, this is really what you're shooting for, right? Um, this is where paid work or, or personal projects, large personal projects are good. You need to start working on things that you don't think of. Uh, things that don't immediately come to mind of something you can actually do. Uh, and start exploring the, the side of things uh, that, you know, they're, they're just, someone will give you a, a feature that you really don't know how to implement, but you can go figure it out, right? This is, this is the time of the Google search. Uh, this is the time where actually reading documentation might actually be helpful. Um, and you know you want you want these new ideas coming in that don't fit into your mental model yet, uh, that you can then sort of rearrange uh, the mental model or look at it from different points of view in order to build this stuff in. Um, this is the time of conscious competence. Uh, 
this is where you realize that you're actually getting this in some way. And you've kind of gotten over the hump of that beginner stage. Uh, this is the point where you want to find the why. Why are things working the way they are? Um, and this, this sort of gives you then, so you have all these mental models of these pieces, and now you're starting to integrate them in. Uh, this is kind of where we, we have these capstone projects uh, at the Tech Elevator. At the Tech Elevator? Oh, man. At Tech Elevator. Uh, and uh, it's, this is where you take all of these separate pieces that we've taught you over time, and you actually are able to put them together uh, to actually make a thing uh, that is semi-real. I mean, it's real. Um, now is the time to get a mentor. Uh, a mentor at this stage might not necessarily be an expert. Uh, that still might be someone who's not able to explain to you things, but if, someone that you can ask questions to. Um, someone that you can really uh, sort of bounce ideas off uh, and, and, and get an idea. You know, there's some question that you have that, you, that seems very esoteric. You're not able to find it on, online anywhere. Um, you know, someone that you can ask, ask things to like this. Uh, forums are a place to have mentors. Uh, not Reddit. Um, <laughs> you, want, you want someone who you can talk to who does not treat you like you are an idiot. Um, and you know, if you, if you do, if, if there's some developers out there that just like to make you feel bad, to make them feel good, um, they are petty, lonely people uh, and, and probably should be avoided at all costs. Uh, another good one is to teach. Uh, you know, at the competent level, you might think, well, I. What am I going to teach, right? But you just learned something that there are novices that are starting that have not learned yet. Uh, and this is a good time to sort of teach. Uh, one of the hardest programming languages in the world is English. Uh, and if you can sort of build your mental model and explain it in English to someone, uh, it really reinforces that idea uh, and, and sort of what you can do with that. Um, so, you know, give talks, write posts, write on Dev2, which is actually a pretty good programmer forum. Um, and make a video if you like videos. Uh, you know, try and try and sum up what you're learning in a way that someone else could pick up and, and be able to use. Uh, that then moves us into proficient and expert, which I won't really talk about. Uh, that's where you're unconsciously competent. This is why they're so bad at explaining things is because they don't know what they know. Um, that's just wrong, and this way's right. I why? I because it's slower. Yours is slower. Mine's better. Okay, thanks. I'll I'll put that put that down. Um, you know, how do you not know what a Turner area is, right? Uh, so you don't. These aren't people necessarily that you want to learn from. Uh, so the rule is you want to learn at the level you're at, right? Uh, and that's that's really the key. Um, I'm going to step over the caveats. <laughs> Basically, none of these levels are set in stone. Uh, you know, they're, it's on a sliding scale there. Um, uh, but what I wanted to talk about was sort of what's the game plan? So the next time you want to learn a technology, what's the game plan? Um, first, mentally prepare yourself to fail. Uh, you're going to fail. Uh, you're going to struggle with this. Uh, you, can, you can struggle and complain and throw things and yell and scream. And, you know, or you can struggle. And that's probably the better one. Just struggle at it, right? And you'll pick this stuff up as you go. Uh, you start with a tutorial. Um, I would say even if you feel like you probably have a pretty good handle on it, tutorial is going to walk you through any differences you have between the technologies you know and the one you're trying to learn. Um, if you do the tutorial and it was a, pretty much a breeze and, oh, it's just these couple things that are different, uh, you could probably move on from there. The goal, of course, is to do it and to code uh, and to sort of build Build stuff through repetition. Build that mental model. Um, find the frustration. Uh, find the place where you're not comfortable with something and dive into it. Um, that's where you're going to learn the most. Uh, now, if the tutorial is awful and the video doesn't make any sense, that might not be your fault. That doesn't mean you watch that video over and over again. Uh, <laughs> it means maybe you find some different things. But there's certain technologies that maybe you know, you're not quite sure about. I'm kind of struggling in Rust right now, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm having problems with that one, but um, it's just a different way of thinking about things. Uh, and so diving into that is really going to help you. Um, ask questions on forums and from your mentor, ignore the trolls. Uh, hard to do, but 
you know, like I said, just stay off Reddit and you'll be fine. Um, uh, get some small wins, right? Start with a small project. Get that down. Uh, start winning with that kind of stuff, and uh, you know you'll be you'll be okay with that. Learn the one thing that's the main thing, and then branch out from there. Like I said, don't pick up a tutorial that teaches you view and viewify and and view some and whatever other view stuff there is. Uh, you know, just pick something that teaches you that one technology, and once you have that, you can start branching out into other things. Um, and then show what you learned, right? Teach other people. Uh, write blog posts, do videos, uh, speak a pie Ohio, uh, and, and do that sort of thing. So that is basically, you know, that sort of outlines a lot of what we do at Tech Elevator, uh, going through a lot of this stuff. So thank you. Uh,